that you can see up in the far corner is what I call the toroidal universe. We're told um, in school that there was a big bang and this big bang happened and everything spreads out and one day it will start to come back in. So it's kind of okay, it's kind of true, but the big bang wasn't a singular event, it's a continual event. There aren't many universes, there's just one. And if we could see it energetically, it would look like this. You can see, if you look closely, two little black things coming down here and another one up here. Now, if you imagine the Big Bang, this would be the middle bit. What if I was to say to you that the black holes play a large part in this? I was sitting up late one night and I was watching Stephen Hawking's and he was talking about black holes and he was saying that black holes They've realised, they've discovered that coming out of them are these things called gravity waves. When he said, hey, you know, we think they might be from another black hole inside the black hole spinning around, sending this out. If I were to tell you that what the gravity wave was, was uh, the backdraft from the Big Bang. A black hole comes like this. And another black hole comes like this. And imagine, imagine the force of two black holes boom, coming together. This is what we have here. We have one black hole, another black hole. Impact. And all of existence. So the spiral galaxies that we see, this would be on this plane. The spiral galaxies coming and echoing outwards from the impact. So this impact didn't happen once, it's a continual event. The universe is a self-recycling system. So this is one entire universe, and it's macrocosm, microcosm. So this same form gets smaller and smaller. It's in the very atom, every single atom of our being, of all nature, of everything. So it's the universe, and it's also the smallest particle of existence. They're all the same. You could say that your body is made up of trillions of these continuously spinning and consuming. So the universe consumes, it radiates, and it radiates light. And the universe exists by consuming its own radiance. We've got the Big Bang in the middle. And on a, a conscious level, you could say this is the formless realm. In Tibetan Buddhism, they call it the Dharmakaya, the non-dual. There is no duality. The first moment of the Big Bang, there is just light. There is just God, pure, pure awareness. You have life exploding out. It's like birth. Birth comes and then it's absolutely radiant and slowly, slowly it gets older, it begins to slow down, it begins to decay even before it dies and then it dies and it decays and life feeds on life. Life and death, they work together. You can't separate life and death. But unfortunately the physical world is only existent in this orange spectrum, orange and red spectrum and beyond that it gets sucked back into compression and density and it goes back down and then back into life again. In this model you have physical existence traveling from the light to death, from the light to the darkness, but you have consciousness traveling from darkness to light and this is what creates the very fabric of reality. So you have life and the forces of life, physical existence, not physical, but life existence, traveling one way. And then you have the force of consciousness traveling the other way. And this meeting, this meeting point of these two energies are what create the fabric of reality. We have the different realms of existence. And again, I'll refer to Tibetan Buddhism because it has the three main realms of existence. You've got the Dharmakaya, which is the formless the clear light mind. Then you have the Sambhogakaya, which is the realm of energy, or Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, divine beings, angels. Um, and this would be the green, yellow realms. This is, before, this is before light turns into matter. It's still aware, and it st starts to take forms in this part, in the, the um, green and yellow spectrum. But it only slows down and starts to lose its energy enough and becomes dense enough. See, it's a travel from absolute light into density. So it only becomes dense enough to create matter and existence in the orange and red spectrum. And this is where we are. So this is where we exist. 
and as incarnation or consciousness awakens it takes forms in lighter and lighter and lighter forms until it enters the non-dual until it enters nirvana enlightenment god whichever you have the duality of consumption and death and density and then you have the explosion and the birth of existence and of, of life and the two need each other all of life is conscious we can only measure existence from this point we can't measure existence from this point because our physical existence our physical world doesn't exist here so although the big bang is continuously happening and this is a continual event and life is continuously sending life out we as as the human realm the, the earth realm we're riding the wave of one moment of that big bang we can only study we can only view from here whilst we're in our physical forms you could say that once you enter into other realms once you expand your consciousness you alter your consciousness you are free to travel into other areas of this people that have explored with psychedelics have experiences of going to many different realms some of them unpleasant some of them beautiful um, i know i've had journeys where i've gone through round and round and round into the dark into the black hole into the death and decay and as that's taken place it gets darker and darker and darker and then it gets so dark and so black that it shines and the light arises and then one is born again one is brought back out into life. In Tibetan Buddhism, they talk about the innermost essence that's held within the heart, and this stores all information. The light at the end of the tunnel could literally be traveling down through the black hole, and at the end of the black hole, we see the light, the light of creation, as we get spat back out into existence.